Here I've got a nice viewer suggested calculus problem. And I've seen something that's close to this problem from a standard calculus textbook, but nothing exactly like it. So I'm pretty excited to look at this problem. So our goal is to find the area of the region bound by the following three trigonometric functions. We have y equals sine x, y equals cosine x, and y equals tangent x. And I guess I should say the graphs of these trigonometric functions. Furthermore, we want to impose the constraint that x is between 0 and pi over 2. Now, let's maybe get into it. Well, we probably like to find out where these functions cross to get some sort of idea how to make a nice picture and then set up an integral. So the easiest thing to do first is to set sine x equal to cosine of x and see where those two curves would cross. But it's well known that between 0 and pi over 2, sine x equals cosine x when x is equal to pi over 4. Next, we want to look at the intersection point of tangent with cosine. I'll let you guys check that tangent and sine intersect at 0. So there's nothing really to do there. Okay, so let's set tangent equal to cosine and see if we can find the x value that makes that true. Well, let's recall that tangent is equal to sine over cosine. So this is the same thing as sine over cosine equals cosine. But we can multiply both sides by cosine, and that'll leave us with sine of x equals cosine squared of x. And that would actually be pretty hard to solve unless we remember that cosine squared can be rewritten as 1 minus sine squared. That's just by the Pythagorean identity for the trig functions. Next, after doing that, we see that we have a quadratic equation where sine is like the variable. So let's maybe set y equal to sine of x. And notice that that gives us the following quadratic equation. We have y equals 1 minus y squared. Now we can solve that by moving some things around and using the quadratic formula. So now we have y squared plus y minus 1 equals 0. That tells us that y equals negative 1 plus minus the square root of 5 over 2. Well, we've got b squared minus 4ac, but that's going to be 5 in this case. Next, we need to decide if we take the minus sign here or the plus sign here. But if we take the minus sign, then y will in fact be less than negative 1. But that means that sine would be less than negative 1, which is not possible if we're taking x to be a real number. So that means we take the plus sign, which means we have sine of x equal negative 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Two. Now we need to solve that for x, but there's not a nice angle where sine is equal to that value. So let's just maybe take alpha to be the angle that satisfies this equation. So I'll just say take alpha so that sine of alpha is equal to negative 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. And I guess I should say and alpha is between 0 and pi over 2. And we know that that is possible because sine of 0 is 0, sine of pi over 2 is 1. So that means that sine has to go through this value by the intermediate value theorem. Okay, great. So maybe next, and I'll leave this for homework, we really need to check where alpha lies along this region from 0 to pi over 2. And through an argument involving the intermediate value theorem again, you can check that alpha is in fact on the open interval from 0 to pi over 4. So that means we've got this intersection point of sine and cosine at pi over 4, and this intersection point of cosine and tangent of alpha, which is before pi over 4. Okay, so now using this data, we can make a nice picture of the situation of here. And so let's do that. On the last board, we did some algebraic calculations that allowed us to draw the following picture. 
So in red here, we have the tangent function. So notice it's going out of frame. That's because it has a vertical asymptote at pi over two. Then in yellow, we have the sine function and in orange, we have the cosine function. So let's recall that sine and cosine crossed at pi over four and their value at pi over four is equal to one over the square root of two. So I haven't put that on the y-axis, but you could consider it being there. Furthermore, we determined that tangent and cosine crossed at this value, which we called alpha. And maybe we didn't exactly determine what it was, but we did determine its sine value and its tangent and cosine value could also be determined using Pythagorean identities. So sine of alpha was minus one plus root five over two. Tangent and cosine were the square root of this object right here. Now that we've got all of these parts in place, we're ready to calculate this area, which is the area described in words up here, but I've shaded it in blue. So let's maybe call our area capital A, and notice we need to take the integral from zero to alpha of tangent minus sine. So we've got tan x minus sine x, and that's because between zero and alpha, tangent is the upper curve and sine is the lower curve then we need to add that to the integral from alpha to pi over four of cosine of x minus sine of x. Because in this region, cosine is the top curve and sine is the bottom curve. It's kind of well known that the antiderivative of tangent is the natural log of secant, but maybe I'll write it as minus the natural log of cosine because that's the same kind of thing using logarithm rules. So here we have, this is minus natural log of cosine of x. We don't need absolute values there because we're on this region between zero and pi over two. Then the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine, but that minus will cancel giving us plus cosine of x. We need to evaluate that from zero to alpha. Okay, then we'll do the same kind of thing over here. So taking antiderivatives, we have that this will be sine of x and then this will be plus cosine of x. Like I said, we need to evaluate that from alpha to pi over. So if we plug alpha into cosine, we'll get this number right here. So we've got the square root of minus one plus the square root of five over two. If we plug zero into cosine, we'll get one. So we need to subtract that because it's the lower endpoint. Next, if we plug alpha into cosine here, we will have well the same kind of thing that we had here, but now it's within the natural log. So that's gonna be minus natural log of the square root of one minus one plus the square root of five all over two. The next, if we plug zero in here, we'll have the natural log of one, which is zero. Then what do we get over here? So we'll have plus each of these guys evaluated at pi over four but that's gonna be one over root two plus one over root two, which is two over root two, which is the square root of two. And then we'll have to subtract off what happens when we plug in alpha. So if we plug in alpha to sine, we get this. So that's gonna be minus, minus one plus root five over two, and then minus the square root of that as well. And so now let's see what simplification we can do. So notice we've got this term and that last term are the same. So we can have those cancel each other. So that's a good start. And then everything else doesn't really combine that well, but let's see what we can do. Maybe we could take this square root of two out front, then subtract one. We can, instead of thinking of this as a square root, we could think of it as a half power and then use a logarithm rule to bring that down. So this is going to be minus one half, the natural log of minus one plus the square root of five all over two. And then finally, we've got this object right here, which maybe we could take this minus sign inside and leave us with one minus the square root of five over two. I think there's maybe a little bit more simplification that you can do, but I think this is maybe good enough. So as you can see, we definitely get an answer, but it's not super simplifiable. Okay, that's a good place to stop.